water. How's it going, everybody? It's Yeong here, and welcome to a Zelda Breath of the Wild hands-on impressions. So a couple of days ago, I went to the Switch event in Washington, D.C. I got my hands on the console, played some Zelda for like 20 minutes, and I came away very impressed. I wanted to share my impressions with you guys now that the game is like two weeks away from launch. It's gonna be amazing. I feel like there's something very special about this Zelda from the 20 minutes that I got. Now, just from 20 minutes, I can't make any conclusive judgments. I got just but a little bit of a taste of what this game is all about. I just got to explore a bit through the beginning area, the plateau, uh, got a feel for the mechanics. That's about it. I really didn't get to do much. You can't do much of anything in 20 minutes but it was just enough of a taste to make me realize this game might just be the best Zelda game yet. The hype for this game has multiplied ever since I've played this game, and I've already been pretty hyped about it since I saw it all the way back when they first announced it. So I guess the best description that I can provide for Breath of the Wild at this moment is that it reminds me a lot of MGS5, Metal Gear Solid 5, in that while it retains the core aspects of the series' DNA, it also marks a significant departure when compared to past games. Especially when it comes to gameplay, there's just this expansion and change that retains the core formula but really takes the whole experience to the next level. Breath of the Wild is undoubtedly the biggest departure the series has seen since, I'd say, Ocarina of Time took the Zelda series from 2D to 3D. It's that big of a departure, or at least that's how it feels. Something that immediately sticks out about Breath of the Wild is the open, vast nature of the world. And you know, past Zelda games were technically open world, but a lot of those areas were sectioned off. There would be loading between traversing certain areas, and it was mostly the illusion of open world, and you'd have to go through certain sections of the map in a specific order. You couldn't access the whole map right from the get-go, and this is where Breath of the Wild really takes a huge departure in the series. It's, again, a lot like Metal Gear Solid V, where, as before, it was very linear in its structure, even if it sometimes offered the illusion of openness. It was, for the most part, you go from point A to point B to point C, not so with Breath of the Wild. It, it's got this MGS5 treatment where it's now super open world all of a sudden. You can go anywhere you want, and it's fantastic, especially for a game like Zelda where it's adventure and you explore, and so this openness is very refreshing, and you really feel that breath of the wild, if you will. Super cheesy line right there, but it's true. Now, the demo did confine players to just the plateau, but I believe that after you get off the starting area that is the plateau, then after that you're free to go wherever you want and you might stumble upon an area that is just too high level for you. It doesn't matter, if you want to traverse it, you can. That's what Aonuma has said about the game in the past, but just the plateau by itself is so incredibly open. Truly, anything you can see, you can either try to climb, try to go to, and it is just so striking after having played decades of Zelda where you really are confined to certain locations based on how far you are along in the game. That's not the case in Breath of the Wild. And this is really the Zelda that I've always wanted. This Zelda where you can really go out and explore without your hand being held. You will occasionally get certain tips from certain NPCs here and there, but you are really free to do whatever you want. And Anuma even said that you can just go straight to Ganon's castle if you want. You'll probably get your ass handed to you, but you have that choice. While I'm sure there's a more traditional path that you can take in the main campaign, you can deviate however you want. You can probably tackle dungeons in any order, and that feeling of freedom really sort of lends itself to the type of game that Zelda is. You have this world that is completely open to you. You can go to any cave you want. That's what I've always wanted from a Zelda game, and it looks like we're finally getting that true open exploration-focused Zelda for the first time. It's awesome. 
So with the world out of the way, let's talk a bit about the mechanics of controlling Link. First thing that I noticed, combat feels Zelda-esque in a lot of ways, but it also seems to require much more skill this time around. And the game just overall feels significantly more difficult than in past Zelda games. Enemies have less predictable attack patterns, they deal tons of damage if you're not ready for them, and they will attack you mercilessly. And it's not gonna be like in past games where if there's multiple enemies, only one will attack at a time. They will all attack and they will mercilessly go after you if you're not careful. And I was very surprised. I am not used to Zelda games being difficult, but this felt a bit more like Zelda met a bit of Dark Souls. And now all of a sudden you have to be a bit more tactical about combat, maybe choose the right weapon, understand the enemy's attack patterns and make sure you just don't go in there blindly. It actually feels like you have to plan a bit before you engage the enemy, which is very surprising for a Zelda game, but I love it. it. It makes the whole experience just come alive and breathes new life into this series. And overall, controlling Link is, it felt very intuitive. The buttons and the layout, everything is simple, but it also does require some skill to survive in this world. You can't just mash the attack button and expect to get anywhere. You legit have to focus on what the enemy is doing. You have to focus on your surroundings and it's awesome. Something else that you have to focus on is your stamina. Your stamina is what you'll use to sprint, to climb, to paraglide, to swim, and traversing the world is very easy. The mechanics behind it is very easy. If you wanna climb a mountain, you just kinda jump on it and Link will automatically start doing it. But you also have to be on the lookout for that stamina bar because if it runs out, depending on what you're doing, you might die. If you're paragliding, you might drop Mid-air, if you're climbing, you might tumble down. If you're swimming, you will legit die. If you're swimming and you run out of stamina, you will drown. It actually happened to me during my play session. It was kind of embarrassing, had no idea, but it was also something that I was like, that's actually kind of cool that you have to actually manage a lot of Link's attributes, whether it be, again, the stamina, or whether it be whether he's in a cold environment and you have to wear the proper attire or eat the right food. It's a lot more survival with a hint of Dark Souls in there, just when it comes to combat and overall traversal of the world. Again, very interesting, very striking, very unexpected from a Zelda standpoint, but so refreshing. This is truly the most different Zelda has felt in a long while, and from everything that I've played in those 20 minutes, it's all for the better. It all just adds a lot more depth into this game, it breeds, again, new life, and it's wonderful. It also helps that the controls are all great. Motion controls in particular actually worked really well. It's more responsive than the Wii Remote Plus or the Wii Motion Plus, which by itself was plenty responsive. I feel like Nintendo has stepped it up even further and compressed that technology in these little Joy-Con things, it's amazing. And from what I played, only the right Joy-Con actually does any of the motion controls for Zelda. If you have both of the Joy-Cons attached to the grip, it probably goes off of the right Joy-Con's motion controls. And when you detach them, if you move the left one while you're aiming a bow, it's actually not gonna do anything, but if you move around the right one, you'll actually be aiming using motion. Or you can use a combination of motion and the right analog stick and kind of use the right analog stick to aim in the general direction that you want and then use the motion to fine tune the aiming and really have some truly accurate aiming. And speaking of the various Nintendo Switch modes, the game plays fantastic in all the modes, whether it be TV mode, handheld mode, or tabletop mode. I tried all three. When it comes to TV mode, I played with the Joy-Cons docked on the grip and it felt surprisingly good. I, after playing with this grip accessory, I felt like I had, I truly have no need to go and get a pro controller right now. I'll, I might get one after some major first person shooter releases, something that requires a lot more precision when it comes to analog sticks, but for most games, I felt you will be fine with the Joy-Cons and the grip and it worked wonderfully for Zelda Breath of the Wild. Very comfortable, 
ergonomic. Takes like a minute to get used to because everything's a little more cramped. Some of the buttons are smaller than you might think. And like the shoulder buttons and the trigger buttons, they're very close together because they had to compress all these buttons and all this technology into these little Joy-Cons that are like Apple TV remotes. But once you get used to it, it takes like a minute, it's wonderful. And when you play in handheld mode, which is when you have the Joy-Cons attached to the tablet and you're picking it up like a handheld device, it plays great. Now, I do think that handheld mode is the most uncomfortable of all the Switch configurations, and that's mainly because you're holding this device and you're supporting the weight of the full console, and so it's a little harder to change grips. Uh, whereas when you have the Joy-Cons held individually, these are very lightweight things, and you can kind of hold them however you want, but you have a little less leeway when you're holding the whole console with the Joy-Cons attached. But still, I mean, you're getting portability that is unprecedented for a video game console like this, and you're playing Zelda Breath of the Wild on the go. You can carry it around with you. If there's no table to prop the Switch on, you can just hold it in your hands and play it just fine. Not the most ideal way to play, but you will be playing and kicking ass just fine. You'll get used to it and it'll feel good. It'll feel functional and you'll be glad that you have this feature when you're on the go. Now, out of all the configurations, I was most surprised by tabletop mode. And this is when you prop up the switch on a table or something and you use the Joy-Cons individually like a Wii remote and nunchuck. The Joy-Cons are very small, and I thought that if I use them like that, it would be weird to hold. I wouldn't be able to access all the buttons like I would want. But this, honestly, ended up being one of my favorite ways to play the Switch in general. The Joy-Cons fit in your hands quite nicely, and because they're so small and light, you can change the way you grip the Joy-Cons however you want, so it's very easy to access any buttons or joysticks, it's all very readily accessible and it is surprisingly comfortable in your hands. It looks uncomfortable from just looking at it from an outside perspective, but once you get your hands on it, it'll feel fine, it'll feel serviceable, and again, you'll be glad to have this option when you're on the go, there's a table there, you just prop up the switch, and you take these two very lightweight very good feeling devices and you can just play a game like you would back at home except you're taking it on the go it's pretty wonderful and the best part is there's no cables attached between the joy cons so you can prop up your arms any way you want really get comfortable and play your game with no hassle it is fantastic works beautifully for zelda it, it is a configuration that i think i'll be using a lot so we've got a fantastic game that blends beautifully into this fantastic new console. And also the game is beautiful. I must say this is quickly becoming my favorite art style in any Zelda series. Combat is elevated now. It requires more skill. It's a lot more engaging. It's less waggle fest or button mashing fest. You actually have to be prepared before you go into any encounters. The world is just fun and seamless to explore. The game is vast beyond compare, unprecedented for the series. And there's just honestly a million reasons to be excited about this game. So yeah, I would say I highly recommend you keep an eye out for this game if you have any doubts. I don't think we will be disappointed. There is a lot that this game has to do to fuck up at this point, and I don't think that will be the case. There's clearly a lot of love and attention to detail placed into the creation of this beautiful piece of art. And I just can't wait until the full game launches on March 3rd alongside the Nintendo Switch. I already have both pre-ordered and it's gonna be a glorious day. I've been waiting many years for this, but it looks like the wait will be worth it. I think Breath of the Wild has something for Zelda fans and non-Zelda fans alike. I think it's just new enough that it'll draw in a new crowd, but retains just enough of that Zelda core DNA that the fans will be pleased as well. So there you go, that is my overall hands-on experience with Zelda Breath of the Wild. Again, that was just 20 minutes. I'm gonna have to get more extensive time with the game to determine just how good this game truly is, especially over a period of dozens of hours, but so far so good. Let us know in the comments below 
what you think about the game based on what you've seen. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments. And to be further updated on all things video games, Nintendo, and Zelda Breath of the Wild, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. <laughs>